In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an accurate, dimensionally correct product design right in Gravity Sketch. This is Brian Galassa. I am here with an IBIS bike frame. We're going to rebuild this in um, sub D modeling so that we can make some more uh, different designs. And our first step was let, let's get rid of all the components. So here's the front and rear triangle. I'm just going to work on the front triangle for now just to show you the process. So first step was to create sketches, pulling all this data, just projecting it onto some planes so I have all the hard points. So these are all the actual dimensions. I created a bunch of uh, sub D bodies that were extruded or lofted from all those hard points. And this is all I really need. Now I'm going to take this, these sub D items and bring them over into gravity gravity sketch and build the bike frame uh, from from just this data. This is all the hard points, so they should stay exactly where they are. Uh, export all of these sub D components, and there's not too many, so unfortunately it has separate items, but that's okay. So we've only got uh, this list here, so I'm going to right click on this and say save control frame as OBJ. Same process, save control frame as OBJ. Let me see this. So here I start with an underlay that's a sketch that I did in Procreate. I find it's actually faster to come up with a better design if you start with some kind of general ideas. And of course you could do some of that sketching right in Gravity Sketch. So here's the important part is I've already brought in the frame as an IGIS. So that's the smooth looking um, file. Now if I go down to the imports, which is that little mannequin torso, and then click on that arrow on the bottom of the menu, and that will bring you to your files. And so here I'm going to bring in the little connector for the shock. So it's a small piece, and like I mentioned, you have to do this one by one. So it brings these in as a control frame. As you can see, it looks super chunky, but as soon as you hit the sub D button, first you have to select it to edit it. And then you can turn up the smoothing level and zoom in there and you'll see that it's all nice and smooth. And now it's also editable. So I'm just showing here I could start pulling pieces out or manipulating that in Gravity Sketch. So I've got to do that to all the other parts individually. Here's the top of the seat tube. And the next step is the bottom bracket. And sometimes the orientation is, I'm not really sure why, but sometimes it's not in the right direction. But this one is, you can see it highlighted down below there, so you need to check on that little blue checkbox there to accept it, and then hit the blue button on your non-drawing hand, the edit button, and you'll get all the points, and you'll see it looks like the control frame, and so you got to turn on sub-D modeling, and then that's the trick right there. Turn mirrored on and off, and you'll see that it kind of jumps to half of the object, and then when you turn it back on, you get the other half mirrored. Um, the first ones I did, I started editing before I turn on mirrored and then you can't turn on mirror after that or you can but you get this doubled up object and so here I've just sped it up I'm going through all the different uh, components bringing them in turning on the sub D turning on the mirroring um, and unfortunately as I said you have to do all these as individual objects at first but once you got this whole setup it's a file I would just save this as a Kind of template and then do all my different designs based off of this um, and that one was uh, interesting because that one was um, off center so you have to be a little careful about that and that and the last step is to set up some good layers and we're ready to go i just want to show you the setup i've got uh, basically the bike frame that's the i just uh, import so this is the original frame that we use the geometry off of let's take a look at the layers so i, I spent a little time getting this all separated out I've got the frame geometry. Yeah, I can kind of fade that in and out. It's kind of interesting when it's faded, you can actually see inside and you can see this kind of stepping of the, um, uh, the thickness, wall thickness, which is uh, actually really cool because that's hard to see without cross sections. All right, so um, that's the frame. I'm gonna turn that off for, well, actually I'll leave that on here and then we'll turn on the sub D. And so these are the surfaces that I used um, from the, I mean, I extrapolated from the original model in Fusion, and you can see I just colored those orange so you could see where they are. These are all the hard points that I'm going to work around. Um, so let's turn both of those off for a minute, 
I brought in some reference image here, images. So here's the original bike, just a picture of it. And um, <laughs> I made a little mistake. I, I brought in a different, I use this one to sketch over and it's a different size of the same version. So here was like my first kind of rough sketch of some idea to do. And, you know, there, I'm going to let myself design while I'm building Infusion, but um, let's get back over here and turn on our side view. So I came up with this one. It's a little cleaner. Um, you can see I started kind of sketching over some topology. Now, if I throw those sub D on here, you can see also this is kind of where things don't quite line up. So like I said, this is just going to be more of a, a inspirational reference than an exact uh, thing that I'm a copy. Now, if I had done this uh, from a screen grab from the the actual CAD of the size of the frame I have, then the, I, I would actually use this to match up exactly. I'm going to turn, let's see, that's my side view. So I'll turn that down a little bit. And it's good to lock the layers that you're not using just so you don't uh, mess up. So now I'm going to go back to my sketch tool. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to double click on this and you'll see that planar is on, which means, so you can see when I um, am sketching, even though my hand's way out here, it's sketching on that plane. This first part, I'm going to kind of, I'm not going to really worry about the, um, the follow through. I'm going to do this, just this lower um, line and just get kind of close. And um, yeah, see, like there, I got this big wobble in there, but don't worry about it. Um, once I um, hit the edit button, I can go in here and kind of what I did last time, which is actually very cool, is um, there's this simplify tool. And so I can simplify this and I'll bring this down to here, bring this kind of over here. And if I pull down on my toggle, whoops, I push up, you see that kind of turns more square and it gives a sharper um, uh, intersection. And maybe I don't want to go total sharp. And so usually I want kind of one in the middle to dictate the curve. And then this one will push up and get that a lot sharper too. And then this is where this is going to really deviate from my... Um, my original idea. So maybe I'll go across here, but I'm going to pull this up. Um, and I'll here I'm going to have to turn on the actual frame just to see. Um, let's turn that down a little bit. So you can see there's some clearance that we got to make sure that when the forks turn, they'll, so this is more clearance than the one uh, was. And then over here, um, this is coming out way further, and uh, I'll just go get a little closer to that. So that means this whole bottom. Um, tube is going to be shifted over a little bit. So I'll just do that. And then sometimes I'll even just draw, uh, let's see, this one is going to go from here to do, 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 all the way over to here. So let's just draw something in there. There we go. Simplify that and maybe simplify it again. Uh, so three points will always do a, a clean curve. You can't go wrong with three points. Um, that will make some sort of arc. And um, when you start getting into four or five points, that's when you start getting things that can get all wonky. So here I sped it up, but this is just the same process over and over again. We're just creating really good, clean lines. And as I mentioned, the fewer points, the more accurate they are. These are going to become the substructure for laying my surfaces on. And you can snap to these lines. So it is a good thing to spend the time here getting these exactly where you want them. And you'll see I have to turn on the um, both the sketch and the underlying frame to check the geometry. But just working these out piece by piece. And then we're going to use those as the underlying structure. So here I'm setting up a new layer for the, um, I'm calling it the cuts. It's going to be the, the edges. Um, I've changed the color to orange just so it looks different. And here I'm using the planar mode again, and you notice I'm actually sketching right on that same surface uh, with the red lines. It's easier to do it this way and pull them out later so you have reference. So again, I've sped it up here, but basically I'm just creating super clean lines that are going to be the um, orange lines will be pulled out to the thickness of the frame, and then those red lines will be basically the center lines of the frame. And I'll start pulling surfaces that bridge between the two and then start cleaning them up. Okay, so if they're lined up, now I can grab all of these and pull them out in one. Oh, and there actually are dimensions. So now I'm going to do one more new layer. 
And notice those mirrored onto the other side, so that's good. And so now I'm going to uh, make a new one. That's surface. All right, so we got the uh, basic sketch. You can see I've got some, the red ones are on the center line and the orange ones are pulled out. Um, there's something interesting since I did these on the planar mode. Um, let me get this. So let's select one of these guys and I'm gonna hit the edit button. And you'll see that I can't pull this out um, because it's stuck on that plane. I can only adjust it in two dimensions since I started it planar. But all I have to do is go down to um, here, it says planar, turn that back off. And even though I started it in a planar mode, now I can pull that off the surface. So then let's start um, building a new surface and using these lines. And this is kind of interesting because there's a bunch of different ways and most of them don't work. So um, if we use the surface mode, first of all, this usually comes in, let's get that out of there, um, kind of with this curve in it. And I like to flatten this out and do this myself. So, so we've got um, point mode, which is, uh, so if I pull my two triggers and start drawing, each time I click uh, my triggers, I get a new panel. So let's edit that here. And then I can also grab this and keep clicking away. So that's um, that mode. Then there's this um, bridge curves, which seems pretty cool. And this should work. These, all, these lines got to be unlocked. I made that mistake too. So. Um, you see how they kind of highlight when I hover over them. And if I start clicking along here, I should be able to start using those and follow it. But notice this makes a ton of points on there. So let's go back one more. So let's, um, let's check that, get rid of that. And recheck this. And so notice you can select it, but sometimes you have to select it again to get these options. Um, this is where I could pull a surface off of one line, uh, but I like this, but what I want is both of this and that at the same time, and it won't let you do that. Now also, if I do something in the NURBS space, and let's just draw, you know, something is not set up right. NURBS, oh, because I'm on the um, bridge, which will bridge from a line to a line. So let's go here. So I'm going to go NURBS, and I'm not going to use the point by point. Come on, get off. Just a regular line mode. So in the NURBS world, if I grab this and edit it, and it's got too many points, I get this simplify option, which is nice because I don't want so many points. So let's do that twice, and maybe that's too many times. So back off one. Um, and then I can edit this, uh, get it where I want and then turn it into sub D and it will convert it into a sub D object. But notice there's no simplify points once I'm in sub D. So that's the, uh, that's one trick there. But what I'm gonna do is something different from all of those. So I could, um, let's start at the bottom here. And I'm gonna use my um, surface mode. I turn this down. I'm gonna turn it to sub D and I'm going to do this mode. And notice I, these are the options I have, just low poly and sub D. But once I start, and now if I go and just grab this piece, I notice I just drew it out in space. I just drew one panel and I hit the edit button. Now I've got this snap command. Whoops, I want it on this one. And the snap command is really nice because it'll let you snap onto your lines. And I found this is the most uh, control that I can get. Notice it's kind of following those lines. So I just started a little panel and now I'm just pulling it along the surfaces. And I want to, again, do this as few. Um, and notice this one just popped off, but that's fine. You just move it back. Um, few panels to start with. And like notice this one, you, you'll see the actual panel that it draws in here is sometimes different from where it actually where the uh, control points are. So if I hold down this trigger finger, because when you see when I grab this, um, if I hold down that trigger figure, it will slide along those edges that were already created. And that's really handy. That was, that's a new feature that I love. 
Uh, so like I want to get these closer together. Now I could just keep that snap command on, but um, when these are out in space and there's nothing to snap to, being able to slide it along its own um, edges is really helpful. Okay, so let's keep going here. So notice here I need more panels, but let's let's get the main structure, the whole width first. And then I can go in and, and add a new uh, control point along the line. Now, this is kind of interesting also because um, I'm moving these around. As soon as I go to mirror this, you'll see that this edge all of a sudden will suck way up from the, the red line. It's, it's using that as a base, but let's go ahead and turn mirroring on. And you can see it now it's mirrored, but now it's not following this edge. Well, the control frame is, let's turn this off. And you can see the control frame is right on there. Um, but it itself is the, the control frame is like magnets pulling on this. The tension is pulling it away from that edge. So I could either pull these out from and unsnap them and notice that they're kind of like magnet, but then they pop, but I still have more lines to do. And if I get another line in here, I'll just do one in the middle. You'll see that gets a little closer. So I don't want to really mess with that until I'm really con um, convinced that I've got all the geometry where I want it. All right, so let's, now I've got to do another one over here, but I want the panels to match up. And so I found the best thing to do is just uh, select this uh, full loop command. And so this will grab a whole edge and I'm just going to hold that with my side trigger and pull my finger trigger and just pull out an edge and to make sure that snap is still on. And then notice this um, automatically snapped up in here and I didn't want that. So if I hold on one of these, you'll notice a little unlock um, icon appears. So click that and I can pull it back away. Uh, there we go. Because that was an accidental. I didn't want that to snap there yet. Um, <clears throat> so let's get these back. Um, now I'll just go point by point and kind of pull them back to this um, guideline and just roll down the surface. Again, keep the first construction with as few points as possible. Like right here, I've got two because that's kind of defining that tight curvature. Um, and again, it's not on the right place, but once I get some more lines in here, it will start looking more obvious. So now here, let me go into box mode. I think this will make it a little easier because this has got a curve around here. So I kind of move this a little too high. So let's, let's use that. Um, I'm going to use this loop command and notice this little uh, thing pops up. This is what I've been using is this offhand trigger, this one. And I'm going to pull this down to this point because I'm going to connect over here and then it's going to start um, doing some different things up here because it's like a Y shape. So these guys can connect. And then uh, maybe I'll pull this one. Whoops, I don't want these to connect yet. Uh, I forget how I did this before. Don't want to connect that yet. So this is going to be a little tighter in here. I need that one to connect to there. Yeah, there we go. And now I can start. Whoa, you can see it's trying to figure out which lines I want to connect to. And it's these. Whoops. Can't get on there. And again, these lines have to be unlocked. It won't connect to stuff that's locked, which is um, a little bit weird, but whatever. Um, okay, so now let's get this. And notice over here, this looks kind of blurry because there's actually two. Um, a lot of times when you finish it off, it actually makes two lines because you, if you really carefully get in here, you can see. Um, so I'm going to use this loop select and just um, delete that last loop because I don't need that yet. And here, I think, oops, I'm going to turn that. You're, you're going to constantly be going back and forth from that. Um, but now I want to connect this to that line. And now this, I only got one uh, panel. So again, I'm kind of keeping it nice and lean. And when I get further along, I'll start adding more, more detail. Um, so this is kind of an interesting intersection here. And so I'll have to play with this. And let's go back into sub D mode. And you can see, um, and let's look at this in low. Oh, I'm surprised it's not as smooth as I want it. But I think if I put another loop in here, you'll start to see, where's my edge? Here we go. There we go. And then one up here. Now you can see that kind of curvature is getting a little closer there. 
So once I get, I'm just going to stop here. I already actually built the whole frame. I'm just going back to show you the process. So now these, um, if I turn off sub D again, you can see these are basically, it's just four sides. It's a, it's a kind of a diamond shape um, cross section. And <clears throat> I want to add another full loop in here. And so that's going to run all the way along and here, like I, it depends on how far I've built and, and what it's going to do, but it, it went along this edge. So that's fine. Um, and then here I'm going to do that, um, select the whole edge loop and, and I don't know if I can, yeah. So if you line the controllers, you see how that green line appears. Now I can pull this whole thing up at once and that will give a little bit of a curvature to this, but this part, and like here, I want to, I want to adjust this a little bit more. So this comes out, but now I got this piece to adjust to. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll just, I'll go back to that loop select. I'll delete this. Oop, that should have loop. There we go. Delete. No, I don't know why it's not doing the whole thing. Oh, something weird is going on there. Every once in a while, something like this happens where um, I've got I've somehow uh, mushed things together. I'm going to back out until it was all looking fine and just do this manually. So here we go. And just don't be afraid to zoom in. Okay, so now let's go back into box mode. And then we can really start seeing what I have here. And I think maybe these guys need to get And um, this is getting a little confusing in here with my lines on here. So I'm going to go back. First, I have to finish editing. Go over here, turn on my layers. Where's my sketches? That's the edge sketches. And here's the cut. And now I can get in there and see what's going on. And I see what's happening here. These just got, when I move that whole line, it moved this too. So this is where um, I've got now three surfaces, which is still good, but um, when I, I mean, sorry, three edges, uh, but I, got, I just got to start being a little bit more careful about how I arrange all those. So like right here, this jumps over. And so I really want this to kind of be on the same plane as this over here, maybe. And, and I'm, let's do, um, Back to sub D and I just want to get that curvature. Now I'm going to end up with a big tight crease on here by just adding more um, edge loops. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and go down here for a minute. So I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom is add a whole big loop here. And then now this is where I might need to go back in and do my layers. Boop. And Turn back on my sketches and my cuts. So now I'm going to kind of try to match up to this. So, so one more time, edit this. So I've got this extra loop in there, actually. Oh. And here, maybe I'll just do this manually. Um, and these are on the center line, so I can't pull them off. Um, I can only move them in two dimensions. And you can see now I'm kind of getting this a little bit closer to my... So if I turn off mirrored and on, you can see it really changes the way the surface behaves. And down here, pop. So I'm popping, I could probably turn off the snap now. And then these won't be connected to those lines. But now since I pulled that down, this is actually a concave surface. So I got to pull those back out. And it's a little tricky because they're, um, they're going, again, this is easier in the um, box mode to really look at this because I just want these to all uh, be slightly lower 
and the edges. So like right here, this is a little clunky in here, right? So uh, maybe what I'll do is get this full loop here, delete it. And so now I got this big, nice sweep all the way down to here. And then once, once I got all that corrected and you can't go wrong with these big, long uh, panels, as long as I got that all right, I did want this tight in here. So now I can re-add that loop and the um, surface continuity. And I had one in the middle as well. Um, we'll continue. So let's go back to smooth. You can kind of start to see how this is going. All right, so um, I got to work on this area here with another loop. Now this might get a little interesting. Um, see how that just automatically jumped over there. That's okay. But let's, before we go too much further, get this massaged. And here, since we got an open end, we, this is kind of what I wanted is this kind of Superman shape, uh, a, kind of a tighter triangle, upside down triangle. And once I add this extra loop along this edge, you'll see that really sharpen up. And here I'm going to zoom way in. The closer I get these, the tighter that um, edge will be. And again, let's get out of here and uh, turn back off my sketches and cuts. And you can see that sharp edge or sharper edge is really starting to show up. And then here it got a little tricky because I wanted to go across that way and down that way. All right, so I'm going to try to uh, connect this part with this part and get this guy hogged out. And um, well, let's see how far we can get. Maybe I'll chop this off first because this will be relatively easy. The thing, the trick is, is that you want to get these kind of big sweeping moves all locked down like this guy right here. So, for example, this edge is very, um, you know, strong, straight edge and as soon as I start breaking this up with panels it's going to be really hard to move that um, in uh, to keep it the same now I did notice this looked a little thick for the rest of the oops the rest of the frame so before I even do that I'm going to go in here and it's sometimes it's easier to just work in box mode because you can really see what you're doing so I'm going to move this just down a little bit and um, and you could do a little bit more precision moves um, but I've kind of noticed that it's almost better not to be super anal about it. Like, so when I move these uh, guys over each other, you see this little line that appears if I'm hovering, I can move this one just straight up and down, or I can do it this way and move it sideways. But really, I want to move it in 3D, so I'm just kind of like sculpting. Um, so let's see. That looks a little more. And like the example here, I got these two lines. So if I move this uh, further back, I'm going to get this line coming way down in here. Let's see what that looks like. And again, I want to kind of lock this in uh, before I start. I got to chop this up to add this in there. So I was mentioning before, I like this kind of two thirds. So this is, let's say that's two thirds and that's one third. And over here, it's the opposite, two thirds and one third, um, just to keep things dynamic. If it's going down the center, it looks just boring. So this I noticed last time was a little bit tricky because it was wanting to grab since it's the same surface intersecting. Whoa. And the other thing that's, you know, a lot of people talk about is just blow it up really big. And then you could just do these little micro adjustments and get things kind of where you want them. OK, so let's say that's good. And now I've got to match up the number of panels with the number of panels over here. And this is where it kind of gets tricky sometimes too. So I'm going to cut out a panel and you see, I've got this like little double thing here. So this is going to be kind of tricky. So let's, and I'm, again, I'm kind of looking at where I want this to blend out. And so let's go to there. And then this is already there. So I'm going to disconnect that. And then I'm going to start again about down here and go down to somewhere in here. And just click that off. And then I'm going to just delete this section by grabbing it and deleting it. And I'll start to pull out new panels and connect them with this. It's Like I said, it's not going to match up. So we'll just start. So this one, I'll connect to this one. And then this one, 
let's just do this one to the whole side and then we'll do this one and we're gonna have to add in a new little section in there so just snapping points and then here's where we've got a little triangle and triangles aren't good i can um, pull out a little panel here this one's kind of weird because i gotta connect that to that and that to that like subdivision on yeah and that's kind of what i wanted i wanted this sharp edge to come up and whoosh whoop into that all right, we're going to work on this area right here. And I got three different things to connect, so it's going to be a little interesting. Um, so this looks a little lumpy, but it's actually um, the subdivision mode right now. If I go up to the high level, it's got this little exclamation point. But if I turn off mirrored, and um, you can kind of see it looks a lot cleaner. So the, the file itself is clean. It's just the um, rendering power of this headset. All right, so um, let's get back in here and start working on this. So I want to add that to this piece. Actually, I want to turn the mirroring off on this. It's And then we're just going to work on these two um, pieces in non-mirrored mode. It, it's just a little uh, less cumbersome. So. Uh, notice I zoomed way in. I'm going to kind of get this guy going and then um, press the hammer and add the merge this guy. So first off, I'm going to um, kind of look at what I don't need and delete a few of these panels. So like this is this is going to merge into this and that's going to merge into this I might be OK. So let me just start going through the process of either snapping these two. The lines and here I got that double edge over here. So let's go down here and these guys probably want to meet up. And then here's the question is like, do I bring this one over here? And that's probably okay. And let's go back into box mode. So I'm going to turn this down just because when I, um, so this is going to come up and hopefully flare out into here. And so this is the key part up in there, but this part doesn't um, hold the same um, importance. And so I also notice if I, I'm going to grab this guy and hold the trigger down on my other side, and I can slide this along the line. And that's a newish feature, so that's kind of cool. Although I don't think I really need it to slide along the line. I might want it to come like right into this circle. So that would mean bringing this guy down. And so I'm just trying to get this line to go straight. Maybe this one too. So it's, I'm gonna let this all curve up into this. Um, and here's where maybe I'll use my cut tool and trim uh, way down here and over here. And get rid of these pieces. Delete and delete. And now I got to get this to merge into this. And again, I've got kind of this mismatch of panels. Um, so what do we got going on here? Maybe we'll start up on this end. <clears throat> so let's do this first. And so sometimes if these things don't line up, you just add some more um, panels. And I think. I might want to move this up a little bit. Again, I'm holding down both trigger, well, the <laughs> left hand finger trigger and the right hand side trigger just to pull that up on the line. Like I'm telling you, that is the nicest thing. That was not uh, an ability before. Oops. This is where uh, that piece is on um, the mirrored. So I'm going to turn this off, turn mirroring back on, and then I'll adjust this. And it's not, I could re-snap it. It's just a little easier to. All right, so you can, I'm jumping ahead again. And you can kind of see I'm starting to get everything much more finalized. I got this looking a little bit better with this edge on here. So you can kind of see some of the, um, here there's uh, three separate double lines that come together in a square. Actually, there's four of them there to get that kind of crease coming three ways, which is always a little tricky. 
this piece here, uh, I don't know if I did it yet. Yeah, actually I separated this uh, whole ring. So this is one piece and this is another uh, separate from the main body so that I could kind of start um, connecting those because this technically loops around through itself and that won't resolve in uh, fusion. So um, I got this here. Let's just turn off the points again. This kind of crease goes in here and fades out. All these kind of faded, you know, curves going into this. This would be really hard in another program. And, you know, it's a little challenging here too, but got this tube coming down into this area. So this line rolls up and rolls through there. So I was able to get that a lot tighter. This one, as I mentioned, kind of rolls through there. And this comes down and this blend through here and here are independent of this edge there. So this crease kind of rolls down off the bottom, but then flares out into this uh, bottom bracket. And like I said, I'm not quite done up in here. Um, you'll you see I, when I export this into Fusion, I'm going to do a little more cleanup in there. So the, the tools in Fusion, there are more sub D tools that they don't have in Gravity Sketch. So the kind of trick is to figure out everything you can in one program and then use the other program for its strengths. So uh, I'm going to work on this whole intersection a little bit better. And so once once I'm all done, this is this is the kind of main body here. This is actually just one big um, sub D surface. And I've got this close enough. I'm going to export it back to um, Fusion and just finish this up and export it. So I'm going to go over to Save, and I'm going to make sure I'm saving on the cloud, which is Landing Pad, and I'm going to do. Um, and export, actually, I'm gonna just save it first. And then I'm gonna, just, just to save the file, so I don't, it, sometimes things mess up, so export. And then this is gonna show me um, the dimensions this is, and, and I can double check those. I worked in millimeters, so I wanna save that in millimeters. And I wanna save this as an OBJ, keep it in millimeters. And I want to add these little extra options. And so um, I want welded sides and I want the control frame. That's the most important point. If I say render, it will be a million little triangles. But if I do control frame, it'll be basically like box mode. And then I have to back out of this and then check the box. And and you might change the mirror, pl I mean the um, uh, axis if you need to, but and so in this one, I usually just add, um, uh, you know, this is C for control, just because I got so many different files, it's hard to keep track. So now we're in landing pad and we want to select the OBJ file. And you'll have to check your naming conventions, but then we want to download that into our um, computer. And then we're going to unzip it and then Go jump over to Fusion, and now we're going to click the Upload button, which is that blue one up above. Select that file, upload the OBJ file, and we should it should take a second for it to upload, but once you got it up there, you can open it up. You'll see that spinning wheel will stop as soon as it's done. There we go. And it'll look like the box mode, and we just there's a couple extra little pieces I just deleted, but this is uh, technically a mesh that's quads, hopefully. And we're going to convert that back into uh, sub D. So here I am just um, reorienting it. So if I select that and go up to my, um, you can see all this, these are meshes. I got three different files, the seat post, a little bracket that I didn't include in the main body. So I'm selecting on that and converting that from in the utilities, from the quad mesh to T-splines. And then all of a sudden you see it gets smoother and I'm closing out some of the extraneous stuff. There's a little extra bracket that's not merged yet. And in fact, I don't think I ever did merge it, but it's the same process as everything else. So now I'm back into the 
uh, file here and you can see there's a couple weird situations where they I, they <laughs> it substitutes triangles for quads and so you got to go in there and clean it up but I found the best uh, work case scenario is to delete half of the model and then clean up the other half and then remirror it or mirror it and then clean up the other half so I selected um, half going from uh, right to left <laughs> dragging and deleted all that and you can see you can see inside it now and everything so the next step is to flatten all of these center lines and make sure they actually match up with the center plane. Sometimes they're just slightly off. So I select the flatten and select select plane and I select that center plane and then I say OK. And then the next step is to mirror it off of that same center plane. Now I know that every single point is going to line up. Now I've got the mirrored frame all set up. And now I can go in and start cleaning up some of these weird issues where I've got these three-sided triangles. And so if I kind of jump around, I might need to go back and look at my original intentions, but there's a couple areas where I've got some weird um, surfacing that the translation from gravity sketch to, to fusion it makes some assumptions. So I just got to go back and make sure everything's okay. So here I've uh, used the repair body and it could show me all the panels that are three-sided. And so I'll go in there and kind of try to figure out uh, how to clean that up. It's usually not too much. It's on these super complicated objects. This is a very complex sub-D surface where it's intersecting with itself. Um, so I'll go through here and do some modifications and see if I can get it to all line up back to the original intention and or maybe make it better. And so here you can see if I try to finish this form, it shows me these red intersection lines, which and an error code that says uh, we've got an intersecting body. So I need to fix all this before I can continue. Merged these two tubes here by just cutting away uh, two sections where I saw them intersecting and doing some blend surface between there. Um, I'm going to show you one more little step here. I'm going to shell this and you could do this either in the form environment or after, but it usually works better in the form environment. But I'm going to show you this one. So here I've got this separate piece and I'm using the thicken command to create an offset of three millimeters. I kept them separate so that I could edit them separately and then I'll rejoin them. So these two little fins on the end are meant to be just solid. So the uh, inside, it's got this overlap. And so I'm just gonna delete these sections and reconnect this part here to create a um, new interior piece. And you can see there's a couple overlaps I'm modifying and some right there, uh, those crisscrossed. You don't want anything to cross over itself in the sub D environment. So I've moved a few little pieces back and forth here. It's all interior and also in the um, carbon fiber layup, they actually only use the one side of the mold and um, the, the thickness is just used for testing and stuff. So anyway, so I'm kind of reconnecting the outside and the inside loops. And now I'm kind of creasing those inner edges just so they get back to the similar uh, space they were. And now I've got a solid body part. And then I'm going to do the same on the frame. I'm going to use the um, offset, offset surface command, create a thickness of three millimeters. And now I'm using the combine filter and this is really interesting. It's, um, it allows you to kind of select these nodes of intersection. And so I'm kind of going through here and figuring out which pieces I need. And, and this, is the, this part is really magical because when you cross section here, you can see I got rid of all the extra stuff I didn't need and I just kept the parts I do need. So now this is one solid body and I can start doing additional 
um, operations on this. Now I'm going to go back in to the form mode one more time and just show you. I could technically go in here on the inside and move some of this interior surface to create thicker and thinner areas of uh, carbon fiber layup to do my testing and see what kind of uh, forces are on there. But that's it. This is a solid frame. Got some thickness in there. I need one more little radii on this edge right there. And I already tried this, so three millimeters seemed to work. Four crashed, so we'll just settle with that for now. And, and then I'm going to throw some material on here. That looks more natural. All right, so we've got a carbon fiber frame. And the orientation's off. We'll adjust that in a second. So I'm going to save this our basic setup and bring that in. So insert into current design and it's going to be the orientations off um, and I haven't figured that out yet but um, the trick is I want to orient it not off of this central point but off of the um, origin point. So I am going to use this rotation tool and it says axis select and I think I got to do this in two parts. So I'll select this axis first and rotate this 90 degrees. And it should snap. And then I will select, I think I got to do this again. I could turn all this stuff back on. And I've got my old frame in there too, which I'm not sure which one. There it is. Okay. So, but the thing, the key here is that all of this re-lines back up. I had to do a little bit of um, X, Y, Z, reorienting. There's a piece missing here. There's some rear triangle I haven't even done. But um, look at all this stuff. It just lines right back up with this. I might um, add some material in here. Um, might hog out some of these other areas. But basically, this is a dimensionally accurate frame that was designed in Gravity Sketch and brought back into our CAD program and we've got um, something that we can actually manufacture from. This is the workflow. Thank you for watching. This is Brian Galassa. I hope you had a groovy day.